question number 163 has been asked by the Honorable S.N. Swart, Minister of Finance. I've been informed that the Minister will be answering questions through the virtual platform. The Honorable the Minister. I'm sorry, Minister, I hear you've muted yourself. Please unmute. Sorry, Madam Speaker. Um, I said I need to, in answering this question, uh, put some a couple of qualifications. The first one is that it's too early to, we're just a month or so away from the incident. Uh, it's too early to give accurate figures. Secondly, the, <clears throat> Uh, the actual details we'll hear from the state SA in this, in the, when they release the third quarter figures. So whatever I'm going to say are going to be largely preliminary uh, comments on it. The recent incidents of violence and looting in parts of Houghton and Guazul Natal in July this year have had a crippling impact, not only on the economies of these two provinces, but also both on the South African and the SADC regional economy. It is expected to weigh on GDP growth in an otherwise modest recovering economy. Official statistics on the affected sectors covering the period of the unrest will be reflected as I've said in the third quarter GDP numbers. The estimated costs to the economy have widely varied, but the consensus estimate is about 50 billion rand. National Treasury suggests that unrest could have literally under 1% point from the GDP growth in 2021. In addition, these impacts could be lasting as cost of the unrest on employment and sentiment could persist beyond 2021. This view is also reflected in the empirical literature, which estimates that economic impacts of unrest episodes linger with GDP potential trending uh, 2 percentage points below the pre-shock unrest level for at least six quarters after the event. Business sentiment has been negatively affected, translating into a stall in investment activity and affecting the special competitiveness of the, South African, of the South African economy. Value and supply chains have been disrupted in key sectors such as retail, financial services. They have led to a loss of revenue for property investors, retailers, manufacturers, pharmaceuticals, as well as revenue for state-owned enterprises such as Zandra and Transnet. Furthermore, additional costs will be incurred for rebuilding of the affected infrastructure, especially along the key N3 route. Furthermore, South Africa's risk premium, which had been trending downwards between March in, and, uh, to June 2021, is likely to increase as a result of the unrest. Longer term borrowing costs, represented by long term government bond yields, have also remained elevated. Taken together, the unrest presents an untimely and negative shock to the South Africa's growth prospects. Thank you, Ms. Uh, Madam Chair. The first supplementary question will be asked by the Honorable S. N. Swart through the virtual platform. Thank you, Speaker. Honourable Minister, may I firstly congratulate you on your appointment as Minister of Finances. I believe this is your first appearance in Parliament, so welcome. The SPP believes that the economy's relevant buoyant start to the year is likely to be very seriously affected by the combination of the renewed COVID-19 lockdown measures and the recent rioting and looting that took place in KZN and Caltech. And Minister, you have correctly pointed quite a bleak picture of the economic outlook as a result of KwaZulu-Natal and Harting unrest. 
While the second quarter GDP grew by 1.2% on the new reporting methodology adopted by Stats SA, the impact on the unrest is, as you have indicated, still to be felt. But it is very clear that many ruined businesses in the two provinces are expected to take years to rebuild. And these two provinces contribute half of the country's GDP, with Durban being the gateway to the southern subcontinent and accounting for about 70% of South Africa's imports. Economists correctly, as you indicated, Minister, indicated the loss at about 50 billion rand. Now, you also indicated that we will only know when the th third quarter GDP data comes out as to the extent. But I'm sure, Honourable Minister, maybe you could give me an indication that in all likelihood, the GDP growth will drop. And could you then give us an indication as what this impact will be on the medium term outlook as well as the impact on the unemployment rate given that it has reached 34.4 percent in the second quarter i thank you madam speaker the honorable minister thank you madam speaker and thank you uh, honorable source i've indicated in my initial response that we are expecting a one percentage point, less than one percentage point decline in, in GDP figures in the, in the third quarter. Obviously, any decline in, 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 the, in the growth output is likely to have a negative impact on unemployment uh, uh, as well. We will have together as there's a subsequent question which is coming, which I'll have to deal with what measures need to be taken to deal with this issue. Thank you. 